Our next lightning talk is Nathan Miller, a, a new science communicator to our, our group who's uh, been working on a project uh, embracing citizen science in Chesapeake Bay called the Chesapeake Monitoring Cooperative. Um, all right, so uh, today I'll be talking about the CMC or the Chesapeake Monitoring Cooperative. Um, so what that is, I, I didn't put a dissolve in there, so uh, thank you, AI. Um, a Chesapeake Monitoring Cooperative is a collective of four uh, monitoring, uh, four organizations in the Chesapeake watershed uh, dedicated to uh, water quality and benthic monitoring. And uh, benthic monitoring here uh, mostly refers to identifying and cataloging uh, macroinvertebrates throughout the watershed. Those uh, four organizations consist of the Alliance for the Chesapeake, uh, the Isaac Walton um, League, as well as uh, Alarm, which is based in uh, Davidson, Davidson College, Dickinson College, excuse me, Dickinson College is in Carlisle, Pennsylvania, and, and that stands for the Alliance for Aquatic Resource Monitoring, as well as us, UMSEs. Now, we also have funders. We're mainly funded by the Chesapeake Bay Program, which, is also, which also receives funding from the EPA. Um, the CMC is a, a six-year cooperative that began in 2015, and we just started our fifth year this week in May, on May 1st, excuse me. Um, what we do, uh, first and foremost, is we provide trainings to concerned citizens and organizations throughout the Chesapeake watershed. That includes West Virginia, uh, Virginia, Maryland, uh, New York, and Pennsylvania. Um, the first thing, uh, first up, water quality. Uh, we um, have trainings that uh, where we tr where we talk to individuals and organizations about how to look for uh, and measure uh, water temperature, uh, bacteria concentrations, dissolved oxygen, clarity, salinity, uh, chlorophyll, and uh, acidity, as well as uh, nutrients that are in the water column. Uh, we also do benthic, moder uh, benthic monitoring trainings. Um, that includes, you know, what's the difference between a mussel and a crab? But you know, that's you know pretty easy. Then we get into the more uh, specific species identifications. And then uh, the other trainings that we do, and this is kind of more aligned to uh, my expertise, is data interpretation. So we have individuals who have collected all this data and they don't really know what to do with it. They don't know how to make it accessible to the general public. So we say, all right, well, come in and come to our trainings, come to our workshops, and we will show you uh, how you can uh, summarize your data in uh, using a variety of media, including um, the Adobe Creative Cloud, social media, videos, um, so that the public can understand what it is that you're doing out there. Uh, and then you might be asking, all right, so we train these individuals, where does all this data go once they go out and they collect this data? Well, the CMC has created the Chesapeake Data Explorer. Uh, this is a website where teams and organizations come throughout and uh, they put their data onto uh, this website. This website uh, allows us to uh, locate where all the monitoring stations are and uh, they can also, we can also extract data from every single one of those locations and when that data was collected and uh, what the data was, and not only that, but what tier of data it was, whether it's just uh, basic citizen science data or whether it's like citizen science data that's on the quality, that's uh, of academic standards quality. Um, I've got a little bit of time left and I just wanna go through some stats about the success of, uh, of the website so far. So to date, uh, we have, uh, the website has collected 68,462 water quality records, 5,274 benthic records. Uh, this data is collected from 147 streams via 460 stations. We have 79 organizations that we have trained to go out and collect this data, and that includes 346 monitors. And all this data collection via citizen scientists has uh, totaled uh, 13,581 monitoring hours. So, you know, through citizen science um, uh, collectives and actions and participation, we are able to um, monitor the health and the restoration of the Chesapeake Bay uh, on a level and a scale that we would not be able to do if we were specifically relying on the traditional academic or federal standards. So, um, I think we have a little bit of time left for like one or two questions.
Yep. So you received six years of funding to, to get this program set up, but the program will live on and the data will continue to flow in? That is a, well, uh, yeah, I hope I hope that we'll get more funding after six years. Um, the, for, we spent the first two years uh, kind of developing uh, standardizations for QAQC, um, figuring out you know how are we going to train folks, how are what are what are we what do we do we consider to be quality data from citizen scientists, and how do we extract value from whatever data that we collect. So after those first two years, then we went out and we started training individuals, and actually we started training team leaders who would then go out and train individuals. <laughs> Grant for it to continue the website upkeep and to make sure everything keeps running. So yeah, and, and you know there, there are experiences of places that are a little more uh, have done this a little more, uh, particularly what with the state of Wisconsin has a lake and stream monitoring program that's really really well developed. They have waiting lists for volunteers to, to go and do these, uh, but the limiting factor is the coordination. You you can't just send them off. You have to have coordinators. So so the, the Chesapeake Bay program has taken that on board and there will be an ongoing role past the this phase of the grant to keep the coordination to be able to keep that data, that citizen science data streaming in. Do you guys work with shore rivers? Do we work with shore rivers? Yeah, we do. Yeah. <laughs> Again, three months in, so I so I'm still learning things, but yeah. <laughs> do you folks um work with and uh, try to keep the same level of scientific quality as, say, the Maryland Water Monitoring Council and uh, uh, Maryland DNR's uh, water monitoring programs, and I'm sure the other states have similar programs. Yeah, they're, they're, you want to talk about the three, three tiers? tiers. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so uh, we've we've split up the quality of data into three tiers. Now we can extract data like quality data from each of the three tiers, uh, but the tier but the three three tier three data, excuse me, is uh, is data that has been collected in the traditional academic and uh, federal stand by traditional academic and federal standards with the equipment that's available pretty much via there uh, via those methods. Uh, tiers one and two are uh, ways that citizens who don't have access to those materials and equipment can still collect qu data for us. But we do. But when we do put that, make that data public. Excuse me. We do indicate that that the that there are variations in methods when it comes to tiers one and two data. So uh, the data we put all as much data as we can out there, but we also uh, make the public aware of the caveats within each tier of data.